At long last, we've arrived at the URL session. As mentioned in the introduction, a URL session is a collection of related tasks. With URL session, we can configure it per our app needs. For instance, you could configure all your tasks to run in the background, or you could also configure your tasks to run in the equivalent of privacy mode in browsers. That is, it doesn't store caches, credentials, or any session-related data to disk. This is managed by a URL session configuration object. There are three types of this object, a default configuration, an ephemeral configuration, and a background configuration. A default configuration object uses a persistent disk-based cache except when the result is downloaded to a file. It stores credentials in the user's keychain. It uses default values for its properties unless you customize it. An ephemeral configuration is like default, but it doesn't store cookies, credentials, or cache data to disk. You can think of it like creating an incognito window in Chrome or going into privacy mode in Firefox. The last type of configuration is a background configuration. It can transfer data while the app runs in the background. It hands control of transfers over to the system, which handles the transfers in a separate process. You must provide an identifier so the system can reconstruct its sessions if the system terminates and relaunches the app. When you create a configuration object, you can change any of its properties from their default values. However, you must make those changes before creating the URL session instance. Changes made to a configuration object after the session has been created have no effect on existing sessions. Configurations come with lots of properties to determine how the app should access the network. For example, the time interval for resource property determines the time a resource should take. The waits for connectivity indicates whether a session should wait for connectivity or fail immediately. You can also set cookie policies, minimum and maximum support for TLS, that is the transport layer security protocol. You can also set cache policies. You use the configuration to set the timeout interval, whether the connection should use, uh, should use cellular access. By default, the value is set to true. Now, iOS 13 gives us a few other features. First, you can designate a connection to allow constrained network access. If a user puts their device in low data mode, then their connection is thereby constrained. If there are no non-constrained interfaces available and this property is set to false, then all tasks will fail allows an expensive network access, determines whether the, se the session should use a limited network connection, like a cellular connection or a personal hotspot. Like the constrained network, if this is set to false and there are no non-expensive connections, all tasks will fail. For both the constrained access and expensive access property, you can put off tasks for a later time by setting weights for connectivity to true. This means that the task will wait for an available interface before starting. Here I have a playground file open and we're going to walk through this together to get an idea of how session configuration works. So we'll start at the top. The easiest way to get a session configuration object is to create a new session. And you can do that from the shared singleton session object. From here, I can just access the configuration object. So if I want to see a value of allows cellular access, I can access it like so. The configuration is already attached to the session, so the properties are read-only. I need to configure my own configuration object before I add it to the session. So let's set the allow cellular property to false. And you'll see that nothing has really changed. To create a configuration object, we access the static property on the URL session configuration.
I can also do this for ephemeral configurations and background configurations as well. Notice we have to give the background configuration an identifier. This identifies the session. If the app is terminated while downloads are occurring, you can use the identifier to recreate the configuration and session objects associated with the transfer. Now notice that we change the allow cellular access property. If you want the connection to support expensive access, you can set the allows expensive network access property. You can also set the allows constrained network access property here as well. Now I can create a new session with my default configuration and you'll see that it's using my settings. If you don't want to change any properties and use the default configuration, you can create an instance of a session like so. and the value of allow cellular is the default value of true.